When you go into the lesson, you will see that it will have a step-by-step -step that it's going to walk you through to create this game. So let's go through a little bit of it together. It says, Physics Cannon 2-Player. In this game, you and a friend can take turns launching balls by clicking on and aiming each cannon. Right now, only the right cannon works. You will be programming the left cannon. And here's the sample game that I was just playing, so you can go ahead and play that if you would like to see how it works. So in the project, you will use the physics engine, broadcast and receive messages, set physical settings, and program a projectile. A projectile is something that is thrown or tossed. It says code the left cannon. The cannon should not be affected by physics. If it were affected by physics, it would fall to the bottom of the screen. So physics, we're thinking about when you shoot a projectile, gravity is going to push that projectile down as the force of motion that you have given it as it's been thrown or shot out of the cannon, that force is going to move it forward and then gravity pushes down on it. So we're trying to create that realistic arc that happens when you shoot something as it goes further away and then starts to go back down to earth. So it says to start, make the cannon inactive. So we'll just grab these blocks and drag them over. That's what this little thing is telling us. Now, the cannon should only point towards the cursor when the mouse is down. When the actor is clicked, repeatedly check to see if the mouse button is down. So when actor is clicked, we want to see if the mouse is down. If that's true, we will point towards that mouse pointer. So if the cannon is clicked on and the mouse button is pressed down, the cannon will aim towards the mouse. Then, when the mouse button is released, so we take our finger off of the mouse button, the cannon should send a message to the cannonball. Next, we're going to fire the cannonball. There's a code that positions and launches the ball when it receives shoot right, but not when it receives shoot left. Use these blocks to finish launching the code. So I want you to try to think about putting this together instead of me finishing all of this for you. A good hint is that shoot right has already been created. Now there are two kinds of platforms in this game, platforms that fall over when they're hit and platforms that can be hit but do not fall over. Falling platforms use these two blocks. So we need to go over to platform. We wanna allow the actor to be hit. Continue working your way through each of these steps until you have a game that works similar to the other game. You might need to go back through some steps if you miss something. The wonderful thing about code.org is when you start coding, it will tell you and playing it, it will tell you if you have done something wrong. And it's pretty easy to tell if you've missed something. So I've got my cannon shooting so far. You will then um, make sure that you have um, targets. So you're going to have um, add some targets to it that have the same code as a movable platform. The only difference is what they look like. And then duplicate some active platforms and change their costume to create targets. So some of our active platforms are, let's see, ones that can fall over right now. So if I were to shoot this, oops, I didn't mean to do that. You can pull these around, which all you got to do is grab them and put them back, hit play. So that is an active platform because you can see when I shoot something at it, 
it can be moved. The grass is not. So it says that I need to find one of those active ones and duplicate their code but change their costume to make targets that you want to shoot. So let's say here's cake. Let's go to the active platform. You can see that it does the set active to true, set rectangular. So if you want to add more targets, you would add an actor. I'm going to go to the media library. Um, I like food. I love cupcakes. I'm going to want to create this same code that I have for these other targets here. Um, so the on start set active true and set shape to rectangular. I'm going to want to click on that code, copy it, go to my cupcake, right click and paste it because I like to work smarter, not harder. When I play this, I don't quite know where my cupcake went. So let's go into our settings here. Uh, I'm going to grab this and edit it a little bit. It's a little big. Um, I'm going to grab it by its corner here. squeeze it down to a nice size. Can I put this cupcake right here. I could add more platforms and more things, more targets for them to hit, and that's what it's asking you to do. So I could duplicate any of these that I wanted to. Let's see which one. And I'm going to duplicate and I'll grab that new guy and move them around. And you'll see when you duplicate it, the code that you had with it follows it, which is really nice. So you're just going to keep working on this until you get a really fun game moving. Um, each of you is going to take a different amount of time to complete this tutorial. It's really up to you how long it takes you. Um, it probably should only take you about a half an hour. It's not too hard, but it could take you a little bit more if you get a little bit more into it. Um, I would ask that if you are done with it and you want to learn more or you want to do something um, above and beyond or you just really like coding, that you theme your game. So you could go in and make it like a kitchen shooter, like this one right here, or whatever, whatever your theme is. Maybe you go and look in the fantasy thing. If you go into, again, the stages and add an actor here in the media library, there's all these different things. You could make a Barbie game. I don't care. It's up to you. <laughs> and that is what you will be working on for this lesson.